Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is my next episode in my devlog series. In the last devlog, what I did was I re-implemented my physics and got it working properly this time. In this episode, what I want to get done is to get my code ported to C++. And then once I get it ported to C++, I want to implement something called picking, which is just basically you click a mouse on an object and then you send a raycast out. And if you hit that object, then you select it. And then I want to hopefully get some gizmos in there too, which is just the things that let you move the objects around and stuff. That's like a stretch goal. Not sure if I'm gonna reach that one, but I should be able to get at least picking and my code ported by the end of this devlog. So I can show you what I have done so far, and then I will continue to work and let you follow along as I work. Okay, so what do I have done so far? Well, I've started working. I have a window up. You can resize it just like that. It doesn't actually resize the viewport yet. And then you'll notice I've also got my uh, output for some console output and stuff, a logger basically is what I've created. And then it just stops when I do this. And this logger is pretty cool. I have enabled it with some macro magic to tell me the line and the file that the log information is coming from. So this tells me it's coming from test scene at line 55. So then if I go to my test scene.cpp and I go to line 55, you'll notice I have this log info command right here. And if I take that out, um, I actually have to compile before I run. So if I say build.batch and wait for this to build, and then I run this one more time, and now we've gotten rid of all those weird logging things. So I think that was a pretty cool feature that I wanted to add to my logger just so that I had the ability to do stuff like that if I wanted to, because sometimes you forget where you're logging things from. And then uh, because this is in C++, I also have the ability to turn off all of these if I want to compile it faster and then turn off all these so that I only get errors and assertions. And so assertions are also working. So if I go into my window, I have an assertion test in here somewhere. So you see I have log assert false equals false. Uh oh, false does not equal true. So if I change this to false equals true, I will get an assertion error. So I'll build it and then run this one more time and it just cancels it and it tells me there was an assertion error on line 168 of window.cpp. So that's pretty cool. I do like how that turned out. The colors are a little bit dark, but that's fine with me. Um, and I do like the way the direction this is going. This is something that you wouldn't have been able to do in Java just because you can't. Another thing I want to show you is my build process. So you'll notice I am not using Visual Studio. And the reason I'm not using Visual Studio is just because it's bulky and I want to learn more about how to compile things myself. So I have a build.batch file, which is not too complicated. Basically, I run this Python script that I made real quick to use a Unity build. So what this does is it just loops through all of the files in my source code, finding all of my CPP files. Then it literally just places them into one header file. It creates this header file, which is basically just including all my CPP files. And then I can just build my win main and that will end up doing a Unity build, which is much faster than the alternative. The alternative is also annoying because then you would have to add in all the new CPP files, which just is another extra step and I didn't want that. So built this Python script, does that. And then I have my compiler flags, which is just like where to look for includes, what version of C++ I'm using, and then my linker flags. And then I just go into my build directory, which is up here. And I say, build everything. So I just say compile it uh, right down here. So I say CL with my compiler flags and then with my linker flags and I'm compiling in debug mode right now so that if I want to, I can open up my debug, which is Visual Studio because Visual Studio is a nice debugger. And then inside of here, I can just click start and then I can debug manually if I want to. So get the assertion failure and everything. And then I could hit a breakpoint in here somewhere if I wanted to and get that all fixed up and it all works just the same as it would if you were debugging a Visual Studio project. So that's pretty cool. Last thing that I got done that it's a little bit different than my Java version, I am using ENT, E-N-T-T, -T, for my entity component system, which means that I have a proper entity component system running. So this basically works by packing all of my components tightly in memory. And it also is very cache friendly. So the way that ENT is designed is to 
minimize cache misses. I was going to try and do an entity component system myself, but as I was looking into his articles, which he gave on how to build one, I was like, why not just use his because it's nice and he also supports reflection. So I haven't looked into that yet, but I do want to look into his reflection for his library. But yeah, and so basically the way Ent works is say you have some system, right now I'm just doing it in the test scene, and that system needs the transform and say you had uh, a rigid body and you also needed a collider. What you would do is you would say, uh, give me my transform, my rigid body, and my collider. Then you could loop through all of those. So you, you would say for entity in the view, and this would give you all of those entities. And it would also, if you make this into a group, it would try and make it as cache friendly as possible, which is super cool. Uh, very easy to do too. And then you could just do all of your update in here. So if this was like a physics system, then you could just ask for all entities with these components, and then you could let your physics system do whatever with those entities. And yeah, that's pretty cool. So if I also take this out, and I can also just change this into a log. So before I was using output debug string A, but now I have logs. So if I want to, I could just log all of this stuff, and that should work fine. So you'll also notice my logs do support Mac er, formats. So I did make it so that it just takes an A formatted argument, which is also nice because you typically want formatted arguments when you're doing things. All right, there we go. And then you can see that this is working perfectly fine, the component. So I have one entity with this position size rotation and it just prints that out. And the way you create the entities is also pretty easy. You just say, give me my registry, which is basically your world and create, and it gives you a new entity. Then you can say in place to give a new component. So I said in place a transform and then you just give it the entity and you give it the values that you would like it to accept and you do that. And the components are also just PODs. They're plain old data structures. So I can have us take a look at those. So if we take a look at components.h, it is literally just structs. So like for my sprite render, it's literally just a struct. And then for my transform, it does have a constructor and it does have an update method but other than that it is literally just these components so nothing too fancy like these are not going to contain any of the logic these are mainly going to be just data and operations on that data and then what i will have is the systems which should do all of the logic so like i said proper entity component system i'm excited to see how this all works out Hey guys, I figure now is probably a great time for an update. So porting 10,000 lines of Java code to C++ actually takes a bit longer than I thought. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be an easy like one week long thing and then have it all done. That is not the case at all. So uh, basically what I'm at right now is I have I am GUI enabled and I have texture support. This is coming from a texture atlas and we have docking enabled so I can move things around, change the docking, and I'm GUI works perfectly fine with everything too. And I'm currently working on getting I'm GUI integrated with the rest of my scene integration, everything. So one of the things that has slowed down my progress tremendously is switching my mindset to an object based view to an ECS view, if that makes any sense. So my render system before was completely like object oriented focused in the way that it was constructed and i was having a real problem trying to envision using uh, ent which is my ecs system library that i'm using and conforming it to my view and so i finally realized i shouldn't be conforming it to the object oriented view i should be using data oriented style fully so one of the huge changes that i made was now you see this is called a render system and so now my render components have absolutely no logic in them. So if I go to my components class, so this is my components.h file and it's very similar, I'm sure, to what you guys saw before. So this is the component structure that I'm now using. Uh, you'll notice the sprite render is the actual component that's used in game objects and it's very minimal. It's literally just the sprite pointer 
and the color. This means that my all my logic for this lies in this render system. And so basically this render system gets called every frame that calls this render function. And then I use something in Ent called a group where I basically say I want every object that has a sprite and a transform, which is this group of objects which belongs to this system. And then for each of these, I basically just say, okay, add this entity to my system or my current batch. And so that basically finds an appropriate batch to add it into, just like we had before. Dynamically adds it to a good batch. And then I go through all the batches that I've created. I render it. Then I clear the batch after I finish rendering it so that it can be added to the batch the next frame. And I also do all the shader binding and everything inside here. So this means it's actually slower. <laughs> it's slower than what I was doing before, which is fine because I'm doing it dynamically added. Uh, before I was caching results and everything, which means that it was sped up quite significantly. But since this is all static geometry, I want to add in a flag in the future where you can flag something as static geometry or dynamic geometry. If it's dynamic ge geometry, uh, we will add it to a batch every frame. If it's static, we add it once and then we just continue to render that VAO without re-adding things. But yeah, so I have made a lot of progress, still working. Uh, I'm going to continue working and try and get physics, 2D physics done. And once I get that done, I will update you guys again. So hopefully it'll look significantly cooler than this in the next time I update you guys. Also, I'm trying a little bit of a new style. I'm talking more about the code and what I'm doing specifically. Let me know if you guys just want to see more of like the visual stuff or if you like hearing more about the underlying systems that I'm using and everything. Okay, I'm going to keep working and I'll update you guys in a bit. Okay guys, so this is going to be my last update. Um, unfortunately, this devlog is going to have to be split into two parts because it turns out porting 10,000 lines of Java code to C++ is not that easy. <laughs> so I'm going to highlight some of the main things that I did in this portion of the time lapse. So basically what I've been working on, uh, one of the hardest things I did was I have basically created the engine so that it's a static library. So I have the .lib and the .pdb for debug info. And then I have my level editor, which is my actual executable. And so this links to the library and this is where all the action actually happens. Not really. <laughs> right now it's still executing mainly from this library, but I'm going to transition all that code so that it's actually executing in the level editor rather than inside of the engine. That way the engine just contains the core code for the engine and then the level editor is the level editor. And then if you build a game on top of it, all you have to do is link the library and you're good to go. That was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be too. Now, some visual stuff that I got done. I actually did quite a bit here. Um, let me recompile real quick too, because I just added debug lines. So those are just a bunch of lines that I'm drawing to check and see that it works correctly. And it does. Now, um, in terms of what I've added visually and stuff, you can click drag things uh, over here. You can change the colors of things and everything. And one really cool feature they added is undo. So you can undo all your stuff and redo. And the way I implemented this was using the command pattern as described by game programming patterns. And it's really nice pattern. This was actually pretty easy to implement. I just keep a list of commands and then I can just go back and forth between commands to execute undos and redos. I've also added the ability you can add sprite objects. So you can add new objects into the scene dynamically and these don't get saved or anything yet, but it also adds them up here in the tree. And I don't know if I showed this to you guys too, but I have a tree. This is all of these blocks and this is the texture block. I don't currently have a way to manipulate the textures and stuff from within the editor. That's sort of my next step and physics. So lots of stuff happening, lots of stuff that I'm getting done. I'm really happy with the progress of this and everything. I think it's turning out pretty good. Looks good. And yeah, so for the next devlog, what I'm going to be working on is mainly really tightening up my platform code. My platform code is really kind of garbage right now. If I go to 
my Win32 window, like it's doing way more than it should. I really should have this just creating the window and that's it, but it's sort of containing a lot of engine code, a lot of Windows code, and my event system is horrible right now. Uh, it's just really bad. Um, so I need to fix all that stuff, get it working really good, because once I do that, it'll just be a lot easier to work with, and I'm going to try and port things to Linux and stuff soon too, so I can see how it feels and everything. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe, and uh, you can stay tuned for the next devlog, in which I will actually, I promise, be implementing physics, but also adding a lot more to this level editor, which is turning out pretty cool, uh, including the ability to change the sprites and everything, so changing textures and stuff. And I want to have another window down here too where you can add in assets and everything. So that's my goal. We'll see if I actually get there or not. But I'll see you guys then. Thanks. <laughs>